data frames are widely used in data analysis. In this lesson, we will look at performing basic math, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division on data frames. We will also examine how returns or percentage changes are computed and explore some of the more widely used methods. Start by opening the notebook in VS Code. This first cell loads some data that we created in an earlier lesson for use in the current one. Returns, or more generally, percentage changes, are commonly computed from asset prices and other time series. Both data frames and series have a method to compute the percentage change. We compute returns from prices by calling PCT change, and then let's take a look at the data frame returned. When the data frame is large, it is helpful to limit samples to a small number of rows. We can use the head method to show only the first five rows. The first row is missing, since there is no price before the start of 2016 to use when computing the first return. Most methods and functions in Pandas ignore missing values, and so this missing value may not raise an issue. However, NumPy and SciPy are less forgiving, and so it is good practice to remove missing values. Drop NA removes missing observations, for example, rows in data frames or individual observations in a series, that have one or more missing values. Drop NA is often used with the optional input how to change how data is dropped. The default is how equals any, which drops rows in a data frame that have any missing values. If you only want to drop observations that are completely missing for all variables, you can use drop NA with how equal all. The axis keyword argument allows drop NA to operate over rows, which is the default, or columns if axis is set equal to 1. Filling missing values with a specific quantity is sometimes an alternative to dropping, and fill NA fills missing values with the replacement value RV. Using drop NA on the returns data frame, we see that the row with the missing data has been removed. The final part of this problem asks us to extract the columns to series. The default method to extract a single column uses dictionary syntax and the variable name. I will use this syntax to extract both SPY and AAPL from the returns data frame. The second method works if the variable name is a valid Python variable name. That is, if it is alphanumeric with no spaces and does not start with a number. If this is the case, then you can also access the variable as a property using dot syntax. Here, I use this method to extract Google's return. We're going to need NumPy, and so I will start by importing NumPy as NP. We can then define the log price as np.logprice. Running the cell, we see these are the element-by-element element natural logs of the price data. Returns are then computed by taking the diff of the log prices. We can run the cell to see these log returns. These have a missing value, and we can use drop NA to remove it. This method can be chained after the diff, and chain methods are always computed from left to right. Running the cell now gives us what we want.
Scalar math is straightforward. We can add 1 to the return using the plus operator. Star star 2 squares the return. Two star will double the prices. Note that this does not change the values in the price data frame. To change the price in the data frame, we need to assign the double price back into the data frame. We can do this using the dictionary-like features of a data frame to assign the series using the GOOG key. The percent sign is the modulus operator. Modulus 1 is the remainder after division by 1, and so is just the fractional part of the number. We can use integer division, slash slash, to construct the integer part of the return. Subtracting the integer part leaves the fraction, just like percent %1 did. Mathematical operations on pandas types are based on label matching. Pandas is missing value aware, and so operations that involve a missing value propagate to produce results with missing values. Because pandas matches on labels, indices and column names, repeated values produce a multiplicity of results after performing the match. For example, when adding two series with repeated values in their index, we get six outputs since each matching pair is evaluated. If the series have identical indices, even with repeats, then the multiplicity is ignored. It is best to avoid repeated labels to reduce the risk of code that produces unexpected results. Mathematical operations on pandas series and data frames follow a distinct set of rules. Math between two series matches items on the index value. Mathematical operations between a series and a data frame match the index of the series with the columns of the data frame. Math between two data frames matches both the index and the column name. A notable exception occurs when using the AT operator for matrix multiplication. This operation follows the rules of linear algebra, and so the inside dimensions of the arrays must match. Math on NumPy arrays, or between NumPy arrays and pandas data frames and series, follow the rules of linear algebra. And so arrays must have the same shape to use element-by-element -element operations, such as addition. NumPy supports a sophisticated method to perform math on arrays of different shapes called broadcasting. While this is a powerful feature of NumPy that can bring large performance gains in some situations, it is also complex. It can be completely avoided by ensuring that two arrays have the same shape before using element-by-element -element operations such as addition, subtraction, or multiplication. We can easily add two series with the same index. Running the cell, we see the result is a new series with the same index. The next problem asks us to compute the covariance using basic operations. This will use both math operations and methods. First, we need to get the number of observations. We can get the shape of a series or data frame using the shape property. 
This returns a tuple with as many elements as the number of dimensions, one for a series and two for a data frame. The first entry is the number of observations in a series or the number of rows in a data frame. We can assign this value to the variable nobs. Next, we compute the demeaned returns by subtracting the mean from each return series. If we compute the mean of the demean data, we get a number that is very close to zero. It is not exactly zero since computer math has limited precision. Next, we can demean the SPY returns in the same way. We can then use the dot method to compute the dot product of the demean data. The variance is a series dotted with itself divided by the number of observations minus one. Let us start with AAPL. We then compute the variance of SPY. Finally, the covariance is the dot product of one with the other, also divided by n obs minus one. We can print the three values. Finally, we can compute the correlation as the ratio of the covariance to the square root of the product of the two variances. I'm going to use an F string to print the correlation as part of a sentence. The next problem asks us to add a one-column data frame to one with three columns. I will start by creating a new data frame with the SPY returns. I will use the dictionary syntax, which interprets the key as the column name and the value as the data. Running the cell, we see this is a one-column data frame. I can add this to the return data frame. Running the cell shows the result has a lot of missing values. Data frame math matches on both the column name and the index. There are no matches for Apple or Google, and so these values are all missing. Next, we're going to look at adding two series with very different dimensions. If we add series that have incompatible indices, we see that we get a lot of missing values. This is because pandas aligns indices when adding. There are no matches between the indices of the two series, and so we get all missing values. My personal recommendation, at least for new users, is to only add series to series or data frame to data frame when all indices match, and when using data frames where the columns match as well. The final problem asks us to compute the return on an equally weighted portfolio. While we could use the mean method, I will instead use matrix multiplication. I will start by creating a vector of weights. It needs to have three elements. I will create a vector that has two dimensions, one row and three columns. The values in the vector are all one third. Running the cell shows the vector. This is not the right shape for matrix multiplication, and so I need to transpose the vector using dot capital T. This turns a one by three vector into a three by one vector. We can check the shapes of our return data frame and the weight vector to verify that these are now compatible. Remember that for matrices to be compatible, the inside dimension must match. Finally, I can multiply these using the at operator. This is the same as the dot method. I prefer this operator since it is more like plus, minus, and star. Percent change is used to create returns from a price series. Pandas math is usually simple to understand. 
series and data frames match entries based on the values in the index and the column names. If these are unique, then the result is not surprising. If these contain repetition, then the output may have a multiplicity of results. It is simplest to ensure that index values and column names are unique. When mixing series and data frames with NumPy arrays, the rules of linear algebra apply, and so the shape of the data frame or series must match the NumPy array. 